Good morning. Uh, First, we have an announcement as we're doing our series next week. Deacon Josh is going to preach, and we're going way to the end of the list next week with the Eighth Commandment. So if you're keeping track, we go from three to eight. Just so we don't know that. <laughs> And we are in the fourth week of, this, of our series, The Ten Commandments, and today we'll talk about the third commandment, Thou shalt not take the Lord's name in vain. Mm -hmm. Names have a meaning in the Bible. They are not given without purpose. Adam was given the name because Adam meant ruby, or red, from the color of the ground from which he was created. Eve was called Isha in the Hebrew because she was taken from the man-ish. Abraham's name which meant exalted father was changed to Abraham which meant father of the great multitude there is much in the Bible about the name of God of his name we read he sent redemption into his people he hath commanded his covenant for every holy and reverend in his name Psalms 111.9 any misuse of the name of God is a sin it is a violation of the third commandment one who misuses God's name will not go without punishment. This misuse includes any manner in which the use of God's name disallows the true meaning and character of God. Any misuse that is trivial, drifting, and serves no worth worthwhile purpose is an affront to God. Various names that apply to God are important. Many of these names illustrate his many faceted relationships with men. Elon, for example, demonstrates the plurality in the Godhead. Since the name is in the plural form and God said let us make a man in our image after our likeness. Genesis 1.26. Some interpret this plural form to be the plural of majesty as defined by the Trinity. Elom, a uniplural word, denotes exactly what the New Testament points out, that both Jesus and the Father are God. Another name for God is El Shaddai. The name means the Almighty. Yahweh, which is translated the Almighty. Yahweh, which is translated Lord in the Old Testament, means the eternal, the ever-living one. In the Bible, the names of God have a purpose. In the New Testament, like the Old Testament, the word common, the two common names for the deity are God and Lord. The one that Jesus revealed as the Father is called God. The Messiah was known as Jesus. Christ, the meaning, the, the anointed Savior. English names do not reveal the specific functions of God as do the Hebrew names. Nevertheless, they do disclose His divinity and power. The, event the evangelicus Billy Sunday is quoted as saying, Cussing is the only sin the devil doesn't pay you for. He meant, of course, that there is no pleasure derived by anyone in swearing, not even the individual doing the swearing. There is one fact often overlooked in the matter of misusing God's name. The one who does so will not go unpunished. Thou shalt not take the Lord of thy of the name of thy Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless. That take of his name in vain, Exodus twenty seven. In the Hebrew text we read, The Lord will not leave him unpunished, that take of his name in vain. What are some of the major ways men have misused God's name? Jesus gave a clear example of how God's name is misused. This people draweth nigh unto me with their mouth, and honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. But in vain they do worship me. Teaching for doctrines the, con the commandments of men, Matt 15, 8, uh, 8 and 9. By using the commandments of men in place of the commandments of God the people violated the law of God Jesus went on with his statement and why we call ye Lord Lord and do not the things we do which which I say Luke 6 46 these people use the name of God all right but they refuse to obey God's commandments this is a violation of misusing God's name those who profess Christ and use his name can be guilty of breaking the third commandment also. Here is how this is done. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name and, and in thy name cast out devils? And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you, depart from me. 
Ye that work lawlessness, Matt 7, 22 and 23. Again, we see those who call themselves Christians and disobey the commandments of God misuse his name. The Apostle Paul addressed this issue also. He wrote, They profess that they know God, but in works they deny him, being admirable and disobedient, and unto every good work reprobate. Titus 1.1.16 1. 1. The Apostle John adds, He that saith I know him, and keep his not his commandments is a liar, and the truth is not in him. 1 John 2.2 2, 4. One who misuses God's name and does not obey him not only violates the third commandment, but the ninth as well. God's name is often used in the taking of oaths. When, when one uses God's name in an oath and then lies, he has misused that name. Notice this example. Hear ye this, O house of Jacob, which are called by the name of Israel, and are come forth out of the waters of Judah, which swear by the name of the Lord, and make mention of the God of Israel, but not in truth, nor in righteousness. Isaiah 48, 1. This act is a denial of what God requires. Truthfulness, it places a false representation upon God as though he permits or approves of lying. Anyone who swears to the court of law should be aware of this. When God's name is used, it should be done with reverence and respect. Anytime God's name is taken lightly and used in conjunction with a falsehood or in an act that is disobedient to the Lord, of the Lord God, it becomes a serious matter. Paul wrote, Paul wrote, Thou therefore which teachest another, teachest thou not thyself. Thou that preachest a man should not steal. Thou, does thou steal? Mm -hmm. Thou that sayest a man should not commit adultery. Does thou commit adultery? Thou that the idols, idols, thou not commit scarilage. Thou that makest thy boast of the law through breaking the law, dishonorest with thou God. Yeah. Cut. The very people who claim to represent God were guilty of dishonoring the name of God by their actions. This is a misuse of God's name. It is not, poss it is not possible to profess to be a Christian while at the same time disobeying God. This unwillingness to live up to what is represented by God's name is the misuse of the name, a primary way of taking God's name in vain. Another manner of taking God's name in vain is to use it in an oath of condemnation. This is done by damning other people. This is the one of the most common ways God's name is misused. Those who damn others using God's name to, to buttress their implication are misrepresenting God. Remember, God will not hold him guiltless who takes his name in vain. This is a day of judgment coming. It is not... God's wish that anyone should perish. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness. But it is long suffering to us, Lord, not willing that any sh should perish, but that all should come to reference. 2 Peter 3 9. God has no pleasure in the death of the wicked, yet it is sinful to make God a party in damning. Another person is a violation of the third commandment. How often do we hear someone damning someone else in a fit of anger or resentment? Mm -hmm. Those who practice this do not realize that the Lord will not hold him guiltless who takes his name in vain. To use God's name in a careless or frivolous manner in, a, in any common way, his name is misused. Profanity certainly applies here. Often dirty jokes include the name of God. Aside from swearing falsely, we are instructed, Neither shalt thou profane the name of thy God, I am the Lord. Leviticus 19.12 <coughs> Excuse me. While swear means to take an oath to profane, means to pollute. God's name should never be polluted by using it lightly. God's name is too holy to use it in such a common manner. God's name should never be placed on the same level as other names. When the Israelites attacked the, the Midians, they shouted, The sword of the Lord and of Gideon, Judges 7.18. They recognized the, the, 
the precedence of God's name over that of a man. People who use profanity have no idea how God views this sin. Those who curse and use profanity often substitute improper words for God's name. When substitutes mean when substitute names for God and explorations are used in jokes, God's name is being misused. Our speech should consist of neither frivolous nor foolish talking nor jesting, which are not covenant by rather giving of thanks. Let no corrupt corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. But that which is good to use to the use of edifying that is, it may minister grace unto the hearers. But now ye also put off all these anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication of your mouth. Then there is the matter of using God's name in oaths for the purpose of backing up one's word. An example mentioned earlier is swearing in the court of law. One need not swear in the court of law, simply say, I affirm. Jesus' instructions was, Again, ye, ye have heard that it hath been said by them of old time, Thou shalt not forsake thyself, but that thou shalt perform unto the Lord thine oaths. But I say unto you, Swear not at all, neither by heaven, for it is God's throne, nor by the earth, for it is his footstool, neither by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king, neither shalt thou swear by the head, because thou canst, canst not make one hair white or black. Let your communication be, ye, yea, 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 or nay, nay, for whatsoever is more than those cometh of evil. Matt 5, 33 through 37. The word of a Christian should be all that is necessary. No oath no should be used. James wrote, But above all things, my brethren, swear not, neither by heaven, neither by earth, neither by any, any other oath, let, but let your ye be ye and your nay nay let ye fall into condemnation to repeat the word of a Christian should be sufficient how serious was the misuse of God's name in the Old Testament here is an example and the son of the Israelite woman whose father was Egyptian went out among the children of Israel and this son of the Israelish woman and the man of Israel strove together in the camp. And the Israelish woman sung blasphemy the name of the Lord and cursed. And they brought him unto Moses. And his mother's name was Shalmeth, the daughter of Derbe of the tribe of Dan. And they put him in ward that, that the mind of the Lord might be shrewest them. And the Lord speak, spoke to Moses saying, Bring forth him, and have cursed without the camp. And let all that heard him lay their hands upon his head, and let all the congregation stone him. And thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel, saying, Whatsoever curse of his God shall bear his son. And he that blasphemy the name of the Lord, shall he, he shall surely be put to death, and all the congregation shall certainly stone him, as well as the stranger, as he that is born in the land, when he blasphemy the name of the Lord, shall be put to death. Leviticus 24, 10 through 16. During the Old Testament times, to take God's name in vain was a capital offense. It is the justice of God any less today. Notice what Paul said. He that despised, that despised Moses' law died without mercy. Under two or three witnesses of how much sore punishment, suppose ye shall he be taught worthy who have trodden under foot of the Son of God and have counted the blood of the covenant wherewith he was sanctified an unholy thing and have done, dis have done despite unto the Spirit of grace. For we know him that have said, Vengeance belongeth unto me, I will reconsent, saith the Lord. And again, the Lord shall judge his people. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. Hebrew 10, 28 through 31. So in closing, misusing God's name is a serious offense. 
Yet one can hear this misuse in any number of ways and places. The theaters are filled with the indecent language today. Something unheard of a generation ago. We need to think seriously about the sin and make every effort not to be guilty of it ourselves. Now that I'm done rambling with our benediction. May I say one thing? It is true, no factor, yeah. that 95% of the movies nowadays are always using the GD, which is totally inappropriate. Mm -hmm. A movie I watched the other day, 15 times in total, the person had <laughs> swore the word GD, which we all know, unpolluted. I repent, God damn, please. We've got to start going ahead and making the theaters aware of the fact that the Hollywood is making it a little bit ridiculous. Thank you for the PSA. Now, <laughs> on to our benediction. And thank you for that wonderful PSA by our elder. Taking the Lord's name in vain is a major problem in this world, as our elder pointed out. Everywhere you turn, everyone is breaking the third commandment. Could be someone you love, could be you. Either way, it's wrong. It's, you should never disgrace the Lord your God like that. It is very wrong and very much a sin. People might want to remember that. And for the comedians who use it, you're just as wrong. Cursing like that is a fast ticket to hell. So please, stop using the holy name of God for laughing, anger, or just kicks. Train, train his name in honor. Thank you. This is what it's used for. It's honor. Should be used as curse word. Should be used as profanity. Thank you. Yeah. Oh.